Okay, so for the first problem on the review, it talks about, it has this one problem. And it asks you a bunch of different questions. The biggest hint I can give you is make sure you answer every single question, okay? So you can just scribble the answer right next to it on the paper or make a statement and box it, but definitely make sure you answer every single question. So the first question says, is the DE um, separable? And then it says, if so, solve it. And I'm not gonna write the rest of it, but it says solve it using the separation of variables method, right? If it is solvable, if it is separable, use that method to solve it, okay? I'm just being a little bit cheap here and I'm not writing the whole sentence down. It is on the worksheet that's posted in Canvas, okay? That's the first question. The second question is, is the DE exact? And then again, if so, solve it using that method, right? And then finally, the last part says, is the DE linear? And this one's got two parts, if so. So if so, it also wants to know, is it homogeneous? And if it is linear, Again, solve it using that method, the linear method, okay? So three different techniques here. There is a fourth technique, but I don't put it in here, okay? Um, basically, part A, where it says, is it separable? If it is, then you can solve it using that method, right? If it isn't, the other method we learned the last time was the substitution method, right? but I don't make you do that in this particular problem, okay? The substitution problem will be its own page. It'll be its own problem, okay? But technically, really, you can, if it is, you should be able to do it doing that method. If it's not separable, you do have another method to do it, but I'm not gonna put those in the same problem. Okay, so here, if you say, no, it's not separable, well, then you're just done with part A, right? You don't have to solve it, okay? So for part A, is it separable? Well, let's look at what we got. The first thing we need to do to figure out if it's separable is we need to get the dy and the dx all on one line. You can't have a fraction with dy and dx, okay? And typically, you don't even like any kind of fractions whatsoever. You basically are gonna cross multiply so that there's no more fractions, okay? So this is gonna multiply with the dy, and I'm gonna end up with x dy. This is gonna multiply with the dx, and I'm gonna get x minus y dx. And then could I divide by something that would help me to separate this? The left hand side, yes, right? I could divide by x and I'd have one dy and that would be okay to integrate. But over here, you cannot divide by anything that's going to just get rid of the y, okay? So in this particular case, we would say no, it's not separable. And so box that because that is answering the, qu the question for part A, right? Or if you're on a test and you just want to write the word no right here next to the question, right? Right here, just say the word no. That also will count as answering that question. But make sure you answer the question. Don't just do this and then think in your brain, oh, this is not separable and move on. Make sure you're answering that question, okay? I am looking for that. So I don't have to worry about solving it because it's not separable. So we go and move on to exact. Is it exact? Now for that one, we have to remember we have to get into the form some function times dx plus some other function times dy equal to zero. It has to be in that function. Now if I go to the original, I'm gonna have to cross multiply again, right? Because you notice there's no fractions here, right? but I've already cross multiplied, so I'm gonna kind of start manipulating it from here instead of from the original, okay? This is equivalent to the original, isn't it? Right, so we can manipulate this one. So all I'm gonna do is move these terms over to the other side. Now, if I really wanted to, I could fix that and say negative x plus y 
Or I could even make it look even prettier and just say y minus x. You can rewrite it or you can choose not to. It really makes no difference. I just like for things to be prettier. So I try to rewrite them if I can. But in order for me to figure out if it's exact, does anybody remember what we're having to check? Derivative of each. Uh-huh. And the derivative with respect to which variables? I do the derivative of m with respect to what variable? Y. y. And then the derivative of n with respect to x. And so if we take the derivative of this with respect to y, what is the derivative of y? 1. And then what would be the derivative of x with respect to y? Mm -hmm, because that would be considered like a constant, right? It's not the variable of concern. So the derivative of this would be 0. So that's my derivative. Now over here, what is the derivative of x with respect to x? 1. And it's the only function there in front of dy. So it's the only thing I had to do. So are they exact? Mm -hmm. So you can just write yes, you can write exact, you can write the word yes up here, but make sure that you answer the question, okay? And because it's exact, we have to solve it using that method. So remember the method. You're basically putting integral symbols in front of these two things, but not keeping it in its equation form. You're just kind of separating it for now, and then you'll put the answer together later. So what is the integral of y with respect to x? Mm -hmm. This is like a constant, and so it's just that constant times x. Then what's the integral of negative x? Mm -hmm. Negative x squared over 2 or negative 1 half x squared. Yes, same thing. And then I could have constants, but those constants could contain y's. So it could be a whole function in terms of just y's or actual constants, right? But we don't know what it is. So we're going to go ahead and start integrating this side over here, and then we'll compare the two. So over here, when I integrate, what do you end up with? Xy. Mm -hmm. You end up with xy. And then again, some constant of integration, but because I integrated with respect to y, this could be a bunch of stuff in terms of x, that when I take the derivative of it, they would all go away, right? So I compare the two. Do I have any terms that are the same that have both x and y? Are these two things the same? They are. So they definitely need to be included in my general function. Now, now we start crossing over, right? Is there anything just in terms of y over here on this side? So anything just in terms of y on the right-hand side? Do we have that? We don't, right? There's no terms with just y's in them over here. However, do we have any terms with just x's in them on this side, on the left? We do, this guy here, right? So that's speaking for the h of x. We know what the h of x is. So I'm going to include the h of x over here. Now that's not my answer, OK? My answer is xy minus x squared over 2 equal to c. This is the answer. And you could, if you wanted to, solve for y. That one's not impossible, right, to solve for y. It's not necessary. It didn't tell me I had to, right? But you could if you wanted to. And then we would know what that function y is, such that when I take its derivative, I end up with x minus the original function over x. Okay, it's this thing here. So part C, I don't know, I'm not going to be able to squeeze it in there, but I'll start it. Part C says, is the DE linear? 
Now remember what the definition is for a linear. For a, for, for a first order, what it means is you're going to have um, dy dx plus some function of x times y equal to some other function in terms of x. Okay, this is the definition for a linear. It has to be able to be put in this form in order for it to be considered linear. So we need to figure out whether or not ours is linear. Now what else, before I go and figure out if mine's linear, how would I know if it was homogeneous or not? Once it's in this form, how could I tell if it were homogeneous? Mm -hmm. If this thing here is zero, then it's homogeneous, right? If it's anything else other than zero, then no, it's not homogeneous. But let's look at ours and try to make it look like that. I do have a couple of issues. One is everything's on the right hand side, isn't it? We have dy dx equal to x minus y over x. So any ideas how I would manipulate that to make it look like this? Do you want to multiply by x? That's going to cause something to be in front of dy dx, isn't there? And I don't want anything in front of x, in front of the dy dx. So what's another strategy I could do? Nope, you don't want to set it equal to zero. You're trying to get this to look like that. You can subtract the whole thing and the other side. You could. Why don't we just add y to both? You can't exactly add y because you don't have just y. Oh, okay. What do you have? You have y over what? Yeah. Over x. What you should do is separate this fraction into x over x minus y over x. And then you would be able to add that term over. Okay, because now it's all by itself, right? It's not included in the giant fraction. Okay. Not only that, this looks a lot nicer. What does that become? Just one. So you end up with this. So I added this term to both sides. So now it's here visible on the left. And it made this one disappear on the right hand side. And the x over x just became a 1. Okay? It's pretty much there, but not quite. Okay? I want to have it so that it's some function of x times y. What would that function of x be in this case? 1 over x. And now it fits the form exactly, right? This is going to be my f, and then this is going to be my g. So is it linear? Mm hmm So I have to answer that question. Is it homogeneous? No. No, this is not zero, right? So we say not homogeneous. And then the last thing says to solve it if it is linear. So here we have to remember how to do that, right? This is the one that's a little bit more complicated. So what we do is we find the integrating factor. And I like to do that on the side. And the integrating factor is E integral. And the book calls it P of X, but you could write F of X if that's how you're getting your... Um, if that's what you're doing to get it into the linear form, right? Bless you. So I'm doing e to the integral of 1 over x dx. Whatever was right there in front of the y is what goes inside this integral. Okay? And what is the integral of 1 over x? ln of x. And we talked about when we're doing the integrating factor, we don't have to worry about the absolute value bar, right? So what happens to the e and the ln of x? Mm -hmm. It just reduces down to x. And so what we do is once 
we find that integrating factor, we use it by multiplying every single term of my equation by that integrating factor. So this becomes x times dy dx plus x times 1 over x times y equal to x times 1. So I haven't changed the equation, I'm just manipulating it, right? And then this side always comes out to be the derivative of your integrating factor, which was x, times y. It always, this is always going to be your integrating factor and always times y. Okay? And you can double check by using your product rule, right? So if I double check, what is, the first term is x, derivative of y would be dy dx, right? Plus the second term, which is y, times the derivative of the first term. What's the derivative of x? Just one. Don't I have a one right here? Once these reduce, I do have that one right there, right? So it is true, this is the derivative of my integrating factor times y. Once you have it in this form with the derivative, then you integrate both sides. So then I'm going to integrate this side. And I'm going to integrate this side. Now on the left hand side, the integral of a derivative, they're inverses of each other. You're just going to end up with the original function inside that bracket. On the right hand side though, you do actually have to integrate it. And you would get x squared over 2 plus c. If you chose to put a plus c on this side, it wouldn't matter because you're going to have to move them over to one side anyway, right? So you're still going to have a plus c there. Is this equivalent to what I got the first time I did the problem? When you did it in part b. So I can box this. I can say this is done, right? But is it equivalent to what we had before? Look at what we had before. We had this, right? And look at what we have now. Are those equivalent? Yeah, if I just subtract this term over, won't it look exactly like the one I had before? Right? So that's kind of your way to check to make sure that you're doing them correctly. One of them, if they're not matching, one of them's wrong. Okay? And that way you know which one. Well, you might not know which one, but double check both of them, right? <laughs> that everything is good. Okay. So I think we've answered all of those three parts for that one. So we have another one. I don't know which ones are going to work and which ones aren't just yet. But we're going to try the same three questions with the second problem. So I think I changed it into dy dx x minus 1 over y. So same three questions. First, is it separable? So part A, I'm just going to write separable. Again, I'm cheating because I don't want to write a whole lot. But the question is, is it separable? And then if so, solve it using the method of separation of variables. Okay. So again, we have fractions, right? We don't want the fractions. So we're going to cross multiply again to get rid of those fractions. So here I get y times dy and then dx times that whole numerator, x minus 1. And I don't even actually need to manipulate it anymore, do I? I don't need to divide by anything to make it separable. It already is, isn't it? Okay. So we have to make sure we answer the question. Yes, it is separable. Okay, and then because it is, we have to solve it using that method. Now, in the separation of variables method, it doesn't matter if both terms are on the same side and it's equal to zero, or if you have one term on one side and one term on the other side. It makes no difference. There's going to be a C somewhere, right, after you integrate. Okay, so we're going to integrate the left-hand side, and we're going to integrate the right-hand side. And so what do we get when we integrate the left side with respect to y? y squared over 
y squared over 2. And you could put a plus c here, but I'm going to end up having to move it over there anyway, so I'm just going to wait and leave it for the second integral. What is the second integral? It's x with respect to x. So we use the regular power rule, right? Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. And the integral of a constant is just that constant times x, right? And I don't necessarily need to write the 1 coefficient. It's there, but I don't have to write it. And if you do write it, there's nothing wrong with that. And then here's where I'm going to put my c. Okay, so if you had one over there, it's going to have to move over here and become 1 anyway. Now, I don't have to solve for y. It never told me I had to do that. So once I have this equation and there's no more integrals, I'm done. So I've done both parts for part A. For part B, it's the one that has to do with exactness. Is it exact? Again, we don't want the fractions there, but, and I'm going to go here because I already cross multiplied, right, over here in this line. So I'm going to take the one that I already cross multiplied with, and I want to get it into the correct method. Remember, it has to be something times dx in front plus something times dy equal to zero. So the dy is on the correct side. It's this term that's on the wrong side, right? So I'm going to minus that term over. And then now I should have it in that correct form. Now I don't like the negatives outside. I like to just know what my fraction is. So if I distribute this and then rearrange the terms, I end up with this, which is equivalent to the previous line. It's a negative x and a positive 1, right? I just change their locations. It just helps sometimes, like when you go to do the derivative part, it's a little bit easier to do the derivative of this. So what is going to be the derivative of m with respect to y? This is m. What is the derivative of it with respect to y? Are there any y's in here to take a derivative of? No. So then all of that acts like a constant. And what's the derivative of a constant? Mm -hmm. Zero. The derivative of a constant is zero. Now over here, I'm going to take the derivative of n with respect to x. This is n. Does it have any x's in it? No, so it acts like a constant. What is the derivative of any constant? Zero. Zero. Are those the same? Same value. They are. So this one is exact. And if it is exact, we have to solve it using that method. So we're going to go back up to that equation in the correct form and take the integral of each term separately and then we'll put the results together okay so what is the integral of this with respect to x integral of 1 with respect to x just x what's the integral of x mm -hmm. And then, of course, you could have something in terms of just y's. That's like my constant. Okay. Now, over here, what is the integral of y with respect to y? Mm -hmm. And again, our constant is going to be anything that has x in it, which includes regular constants as well. And so then we do the crossover, right? Like we look at both and compare. Is there anything with x's and y's that they have in common? 
any terms with both x's and y's? There's not. This doesn't have x's and y's in each term, and this doesn't have x's and y's in this term. So there's no part that they have in common. Well, then that pretty much means that I just have the g of, x, g of y and the h of x, right? Because all of this is the h of x, right? And then all of this is the g of y. And so those are the parts that I'm going to include. So x minus x squared plus y squared over 2. And so then my solutions are going to be that function equal to c and I don't have to manipulate it but I do want to know just for my own sake to know if I did this correctly is it equivalent to what I got the first time I solved it using it the other method notice that in this method I have y squared over 2 by itself right if I were to try to get the y squared over 2, wouldn't I have to add the x squared over 2 over? So it would become positive. And I would have to subtract this x over, and it would become negative, wouldn't it? So these two are, in fact, equivalent. So I'm pretty sure that I'm doing everything correctly if I'm getting the same thing for both. And then let's see if it is linear. If I need more paper, I'll go get some more paper. So we want the dy dx by itself, but we also want the y on that side. This one you may have to, because you have y downstairs, you may have to multiply by y. But this is not going to work because even if you move over the 1, if you try to get this y over here where it's supposed to go, right, you would have to divide by it, right? 1, that's not good because it's going to be downstairs, but then 2, it's going to be a y over here as well, okay? And that's not good either. So this one is not linear. I cannot manipulate it so that it's in that linear form. What was the linear form? The linear form was the dy dx plus some function, the book uses p, I used f earlier, it didn't matter, some function of x times y equal to some other function. Okay, It has to be able to be put into that form in order for me to say that it is linear. Okay, so I don't really, and if it's not linear, I don't need to worry about the next question because the next question said, if so, is it homogeneous, right? But it isn't linear, so I don't have to worry about it if it's homogeneous or not. Okay, these are the ones that are long, which is why I just wanted it one problem all on its own. But for number three, it says to solve using the substitution method, okay? And it says solve it using an appropriate substitution. So you're going to choose. Now we talked about the common ones that are typically used, um, and that's either you're letting x equal uy or you're letting y equal ux. And you decide based on who's causing the issue, okay? And the issue being, who is preventing this from being a separable equation, okay? This is all by himself. There's no problem going on in front of dy, right? I can integrate dy, no problem. It's not an issue. I can integrate x with respect to x can integrate a constant with respect to x. It's this variable that's causing the problem. 
making it so that I cannot separate this. Because if I divide by y here and here, it's going to put a y under these two terms, isn't it? And therefore still not being separable. So in this particular example, y is the problem. And if it's the problem, that's the one I'm going to sub. So I'm going to say let y equal ux. So basically I'm going to turn it into a bunch of x's. And then hopefully after that, and use, hopefully when I'm done, it'll be separable after that. Now, if y equals u of x, I have to do the product rule to find out dy. So the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And so that's what dy is. And now I'm just going to substitute. So in my original, the dy is going to become all of this, these two terms. And the y here that was inside the parentheses is going to become ux. And now I have a new equation and I want to try to separate this new equation because that's the point of this substitution is to create a now separable equation. So first thing I'm going to do is to distribute so that I don't have any parentheses. Next thing I'm going to do is get the u's on one side and the d or du's on one side and the dx is on the other side. So I have one term, right? This term needs to move. It's on the wrong side, right? So I'm going to minus it. So I'm going to have x du equal to 2x dx plus ux dx minus 2 dx minus u dx. And then you want to try to factor out the dx. And then maybe you might be able to even factor what you have left. Let's see though. Let's go in pieces. So first I'm going to factor out the dx. So I'm basically rewriting all of those terms with the dx out to the side, right? And anytime you have four terms and you're trying to factor it, the method you should be using is the grouping method. Okay? So if I group these two together and those two together, you start to figure out how you can graph it. I like to draw a line in between. And so what do these two terms have in common? So taking you way back, right? Remedial, intermediate algebra, I think it is, that we learned factoring. These two have an x in common. If I factor out the x, I'll be left with 2 plus u. Make sure that when you distribute this back, you end up with those same two terms. Here, whatever sign is there is the sign I have to bring down. That's just part of the factoring grouping method. If it's a minus there, you have to bring down a minus. If it's a plus, you bring down the plus. But these two numbers or two terms have nothing in common. So that means all I can take out is a 1. But it happens to be a negative 1, doesn't it? So if I divide negative 2 by negative 1, what do I get? 2. Mm -hmm. And if I take negative u and divide it by negative 1, what do you get? Positive u. Positive u. And so just be sure, if I were to distribute this negative 1, would it give me those two terms still? Yeah, so we're okay. We did everything. We didn't just magically change the problem, right? We're just cleverly trying to do this. What do the two sides have in common? 2 plus u. And if I were to factor that out, all I would have left is the x and the minus 1 that were on the outsides. And again, if you were to distribute... If you were to take this whole thing in parentheses and multiply it to the x and then multiply it to the negative 1, you get that right above it.
So this is the factored version of that equation. Now, I have to separate it. So what's the problem over here with the du? Am I allowed to have an x next to the du? It's supposed to just be used, right, when you're separating them. So I'm going to have to divide by an x. But while I'm at it, I want to take care of the other side as well. What factor is causing the problem on the right-hand side? Which factor has the wrong variables? Mm-hmm. They're only supposed to be x's on the right-hand side, right? So this factor right here is an issue. So we're going to divide by it on both sides. Okay? So then what ends up happening is these cancel, and I end up with 1 over 2 plus u, du. Over here, these guys cancel, and I end up with x minus 1 over x, dx. Now it's separable. Now I can solve it. However, I would manipulate both sides, actually, before I do that. I separated the fraction on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, since the u is positive, I just put it in the front. You could leave it in the back, it don't matter, but I like the variables in the front if they're positive. If it were minus u, I would not have moved it to the front. I would have left it alone, because it's prettier that way. Okay, now we're going to do the hard part, which in this case is not too bad, but integrate both sides. And so as long as the derivative of the denominator is at the top, then it's the ln kind of version, okay? So what is the derivative of u plus 2? With respect to u. So u is the variable in concern. You can use the power rule. What is the derivative of u? What is the derivative of x with respect to x? Just 1. So the derivative of u with respect to u is just 1. Is that what I have in the numerator? It is. So I don't even need to manipulate it. I don't need to use substitution. I don't need to do anything. This is just going to turn out to be the ln of u plus 2. Now I could put a plus c on this side, or I could just save it for the right-hand side later. Just don't forget it, right, altogether. You definitely don't want to forget it. <laughs> okay, now here I'm going to integrate the right-hand side, but I have two terms. What's the integral of just 1 with respect to x? Just x. Then I'm going to put my minus sign. What's the integral of 1 over x? Mm -hmm. Remember, the derivative of x is 1. Right? I have the derivative over the original, which is what allows me to say it's ln. And then I can't forget my constant. Now the directions do say, write your solutions without any fractions. I don't have fractions, so I'm good there. Logarithms. I do have logarithms, so I'm going to have to fix that. Exponentials with y or c or parentheses. Okay? So let me fix the ln problem. The best way to do that is put all the lns together so that you just have one ln, and that's it. So I'm going to put these together. Oh, it shouldn't be minus, right? If I move this to this term, what does it become? Plus. Yes. Then I'm going to use my properties that says this would be u plus 2 times x. And then how do you get rid of an ln? You raise both sides of the equation to the e. So I'm going to go e raised to this side, e raised to that side. So here the ln will go away, and I'll just end up with u plus 2 times x. Over here, you 
to write it. Instead of writing e to the x plus c, you can write e to the x times e to the c. And e to the c is just a constant, isn't it? So it's just times a big fat constant. Or it can be something like that. The left hand side I do have to, I can distribute the x, that's okay to do. But did the problem originally have u's in it? No, it had y's, didn't it? Okay, and so you have to back sub what is u. Now I see that I have ux there, and isn't that exactly what y was? Right? So you can do one of two things. You can either say, oh, ux is the same thing as y, and now you have this, or you can do it the traditional way where you solve for u, and then you replace the u with y over x. But what happens to that term when you do that? The x is still cancel and you still end up with y, don't you? Okay, so I just wanted to go over this in case this isn't exactly just ux, you still know what to do with it, okay? Go back up to your y equals ux, figure out what u is, and then make that substitution for all the u's in your problem, okay? We just got lucky because it said ux, which is exactly what y was set equal to. Okay, so I've got this. Do I have any, my exponential does not have a C up there anymore. It did up here, right? But I fixed it. And it does not have any Y's up in the exponent either. So I fit that particular part. Do I have any parentheses here? No, and there's no more logarithms anymore. So we're done, we can stop. If it bothers you and you wanna minus the two X over, go for it, but you're done. You have the equation. Okay, the next problem is number four. It's the last one we have. And it's one of those um, initial value problems. So we've got all the examples. We've had at least one separable function. We've had at least, we had two that were exact, right? And we've had at least one that was linear, and now we've even had a problem with substitution. When you get to this problem, you're not given any other information. You're not told whether it's linear or whether it's exact, whether it's separable, or whether it's not separable and not linear and not exact, okay? So you have no idea which method is going to be applicable unless you just go through all of them, okay? Which is why I did that for parts one and two, because I need you to get into that habit of going through all of the questions, right? Is it separate, is it exact? And I went in the order of what I think is the easiest to the hardest method. So I think separable is the easiest method to solve a DE. And then the next, the next easiest to me was the um, exact way, the exact method. And then the hardest usually is the, um, oh gosh, what is it called? The linear one, the one that has the e to the integral of p of x, right? That to me is the harder one. Um, just because there's a lot more to remember with that one. So if you go through those when you're doing the last problem, the initial value problem, you'll figure out which method is the one that you're going to have to do, okay? And the only time you have to do substitution is if it's not linear, it's not exact, and it's not separable. So if it's not any of those three, then you have to do the um, substitution method, okay? But if it's more than one of those, 
you can choose. So if this problem happens to be linear and it happens to be exact, I don't care which way you solve it, you're going to get the same answer. Okay? So you can pick if it's more than one, one method applies. So first we go through it. Is it separable? I don't know and I can't tell the way it's written right now. Okay? The first thing I would do is get rid of the fraction so that I can see if it's separable. But if I get rid of the fraction, I multiply all the terms by dx. I'm going to end up getting 2y dx equals x dx. I can tell right away that it's not separable, but can you? Because what happens if I try to divide by y to get this term to have no y's in it? You're going to end up sticking a y down here, right? Because I'm going to have to divide by y here, divide by y there, and then I'm still going to have a y next to my dx, which is still bad. So this thing is not separable. And if it takes you a while to manipulate it before you figure it out, that's fine. You have two hours to take the test. <laughs> and there's not very many questions on there, so you have the time to mess around with it. Okay, next would be to see if it's exact. Well, again, in order for me to figure that out, it has to be in that certain form. The m dx plus the n dy equal to zero. So first thing I'm going to do is move this term over to the left-hand side. Then I'm going to kind of do two things at once. I'm going to factor out the dx from those back two terms, but at the same time, I'm going to put those two terms in the front. Okay? So this term is going to go in the back, and these two terms are going to go in the front. But when I factor out the dx, it ends up becoming this. If it takes you the two steps, that's fine. I just like to save paper, so I try to do one or two steps at a time. No more than that, because then you lose yourself. Page three. Okay, so then I'm going to find m, y. What is the derivative of this with respect to y? It is 2. What is the derivative of this with respect to x? 1. Are they the same? So it's not exact. I can't solve it that way either. So now we try to see if it's linear. Can we get it into this form? I'm going to try to stick with the book. It uses p of x. Can I get it to look like that? Here I wouldn't use these versions because it does need a dy dx, doesn't it? So I would go back to the original one. Can you get rid of that x in the original one so that dy dx is all by itself? How would you get rid of that? Mm -hmm. So divide this one by x, divide that one by x, divide that one by x. What you get is dy dx plus 2y over x equal to x over x. And then make it look exactly like that, just so you don't mess up anything, right? The p of x is the 2 over x part, and then the y is all by itself. What do you get over here when you have x over x? Mm-hmm, it's just one. Is it in that form? It is, so it's linear. Now, I didn't have to write that it was linear, but that's just my own little note to myself. It didn't ask me whether it was linear or not. I'm just going through the motions to figure out how am I going to solve this thing, right? So it is linear, so we're going to have to use that method for linear, which is not my favorite, but we're forced to do it in this problem. Or I could do substitution, which I really don't like doing because it's really long. 
Okay, so I'm going to do e to the integral of 2 over x dx. First thing we want to do is take that 2 constant out to the front. And then what's the integral of 1 over x? We've done it a couple times now. ln of x. Now I can't exactly cancel these two things the way they are. It has to just be ln of x right there and then whatever the argument is. But I do have a property that says that these coefficients can be rewritten as exponents. And once it's written like that, then the e and the ln are right next to each other and they can cancel each other out, right? So you actually end up getting <coughs> x squared as your integrating factor. So I'm going to take my original problem and multiply everything by x squared. <coughs> and so we already know on this side we're going to get the derivative of the integrating factor times y. Always the integrating factor times y. The right hand side is whatever it is. So what am I going to end up with on the right hand side after I multiply by x squared? just x squared. Then I take the integral of both sides with respect to x then because I have the derivative with respect to x and the integral with respect to x those undo each other giving me just the integrating factor times y by itself and over here when I integrate that I get x cubed over 3 of course plus c. Now, if all I was doing was solving the DE, I would be done, right? Or if the X squared in front of the Y bothers you, you could divide by it and then be done. But we've solved the DE. The only thing is, is we haven't solved the initial condition problem, okay? So we have to go back up to the original statement and use this statement to figure out what exactly should that C be, okay? So this value is which value? The x or the y? This is the x value and the 3 is the y value. So when I come down here, I'm going to plug in a 1 for all the x's and a 3 for all the y's. If they happen to be here more than once. That looks like I'm going to bleed into another page. So what will I get when I do 1 squared times 3? guys are too quiet. Three. <laughs> three. And then what about one cubed over three? One third. And then to figure out that C, we just have to minus, right? So this is nine thirds minus one third is eight thirds. All I did was minus one third from both sides, right? So then now I know what my answer should be. It should be x squared y equals x cubed over three the C value I just found. And you can leave it like that or you can get Y by itself. It's up to you. But it never said put Y by itself, right? So I don't have to unless I really, really want to. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording here. It's really, really long. But I am going to open up the floor for questions either over the review or over homework.